Greetings. Again, it's me, Dr. Johnson, veterinarian, Marietta, Georgia, with Specialty in Fish Health. Probably you've been through 18 videos leading up to this one. Sorry about that. But there's a very important subject I want to talk to you about in this video, number 19 in the step 20-step process, and that is quarantine. This is huge. I probably should have put it very early in the steps because quarantine basically in the long and the short of it is quarantine is another facility uh, the best quarantine actually if you think about it is your first pond or your first fish tank let me explain that most people get a fish tank and then they upgrade and a lot of people take down the first fish tank that they had. For example, if you started out in a 20-gallon, then you went to a 75, they have a tendency to take down the 20, which is too bad. Uh, if they build a pond, 1,000 gallons or 500 gallons or whatever, they have a tendency to uh, upgrade to something much, much larger, and then they take down the original pond. Or, and this is understandable, they remove the first pond and put a new pond in. But wouldn't it be amazing if they kept the first pond or they kept the first fish tank for quarantine, and quarantine is a established, balanced, warmed, or temperature-appropriate facility that fish can be put into before they get sick, when you buy them, for example, or after they get sick. And I think people don't really think about their quarantine system that way that it can have its advantages uh, when you get new fish, you put the fish in there and give them a week or two or three to break with any disease they might be carrying before you put them in the main system where <clears throat> your good fish, uh, your existing population gets sick or worse, you have trouble treating these particular parasites. Um, because, for example, in saltwater facilities, this is horrible when it happens. Uh, saltwater facilities, you introduce a sick fish, and <clears throat> it infects everybody, and it turns out that you have um, sharks in the tank, or you have um, invertebrates, or you've got uh, corals and, and things like that that you can't treat around. What a mess. For those people, actually, they've probably learned a lot about quarantine um, before now, uh, if you are in salt water, chances are you're a little bit more advanced hobbyist. But for freshwater and ponds, quarantine is like the bomb. You need to do it. It's very important. I'll tell you this, that if people used a quarantine, and I'm not talking some crappy quarantine with crummy water that the fish can barely turn around in that you set up yesterday, um, where water quality is actually worse than the parasite they might be carrying, I'm not talking about that quarantine. I'm talking about a healthy setup made for it kind of a quarantine facility if you did that with all your new fish you wouldn't probably be here right now okay you would have figured out what was going on before the fish got sick in your main system well so the long and the short of it is relative to getting fish better if you had quarantined chances are you wouldn't be on step 19 of the 20 step process uh, second if your fish have um, fin rot or bacterial sores which we will have already discussed, it would be awesome if you had a quarantine facility to put those fish in while you were treating them. That way uh, you would not be netting up this fish over and over again. You would not be um, terrorizing your good fish with um, a net every day for handling the sick one. You basically would just move that fish over to what then becomes from quarantine turns into a hospital tank. And uh, we already talked about what would happen if um, you were treating one fish for bacterial infection. You know, you'd have to treat all your fish for bacterial infection. But the ones that aren't at risk of dying can be treated in the pond. <clears throat> so this video basically is about quarantine. Let me explain it with a little bit more detail because it's also going to be a standalone quarantine video. So we discussed that quarantine is a system that you set up to put the fish in before they go into your main pond or use it as a hospital system. And we've already covered the fact that the system needs to be established with good water quality, adequate air flows, filtration, and et cetera, so that the environment is healthy and not just set up without beneficial bacteria and with deteriorating water quality. 
Quarantine facilities should be large enough for the fish to swim around comfortably. Um, I've seen quarantines where the fish one time couldn't even turn around in the fish tank. That fish isn't going to do well in quarantine, probably end up being sicker than if you didn't quarantine at all. Uh, so the quarantine needs to be large enough for the health of the fish. Uh, not even crazy to think an inch of fish per gallon of water or even an inch of fish per five gallons of water in pond fish. Um, of course, it would be amazing if they had a gallon, uh, an inch of fish per 10 gallons in quarantine for pond fish. That would be awesome. Uh, in quarantine, uh, the duration of quarantine is uh, contested. If you're talking about koi herpes virus in water below 68 to 72 degrees, you should quarantine them uh, forever, uh, absolutely forever, because the virus, the koi herpes virus, as you have already been told, that virus can exist latently in the fish for an indefinite or unknown period of time below 72 degrees. When the fish get into that range or higher, uh, the virus manifests. This is pond fish. Um, I don't think you need to quarantine forever because the next thing I'm going to tell you is quarantine ideally would be 76 to 79 degrees. We've talked about in the temperature video, we talked about too warm can be a detriment to beneficial bacteria because it puts a very significant load on dissolved oxygen and uh, even to a certain extent on the oxygen for the fish. So. 76 to 78, 79 degrees is enough to bring up the diseases that you're afraid of, um, let them manifest, but also for the fish to get over those diseases effectively. For example, ick, um, koi herpes virus, most of the ciliated protozoan parasites, some of the flukes, although they can carry flukes invisibly for quite a while. Um, but quarantine is also a facility uh, where you can monitor and measure temperature. You can even create a temperature uh, that you consider ideal for management of diseases, but also you can treat uh, economically in a smaller facility or smaller pond. You're not going to go through quite as much clout. You're not going to have to use quite as much formalin. Um, you can get by with less potassium permanganate without the uh, environmental side effects. Uh, you can run a UV on that system in quarantine, which I would recommend probably that you do. Hope you wrote that down. That's why I tell you to have a pen and paper handy for those little side notes. UV in quarantine. Check. Um, whereas you might not have to run a UV on your main system. In fact, I kind of recommend that you don't run a UV on the main system if you can help it because there are so many beneficial organisms in the water. Uh, of course, bad organisms in the water, too. But there's so many beneficial organisms in the water that you kill with UV uh, that can um, have a negative uh, effect on the fish. In particular, uh, an organism called a bacteriophage. It's a virus, believe it or not, of bacteria. That's pretty cool, isn't it? A virus that uh, runs around and kills bacteria. Um, it's part of the balanced ecosystem. Um, there are rotifers and nematodes and crustaceans in the gravel or in the environment or the bi uh, biome that um, can have a reproductive cycle that goes through the water. And uh, these beneficials, if their offspring go through the UV, they're killed too. And algae has a certain benefit as well. Not, I mean, yeah, green water, but then you can't see your fish, and that's the reason most people get a UV. I am rambling. So, quarantine indefinite for koi herpes virus or raise the, koi, raise the uh, quarantine to 76 to 78, 79 degrees and then you won't uh, have anything hidden in there. You can treat in quarantine and I have some shotgun therapies for quarantine in the shotgun video, which I don't remember which number it is in the 20 steps, but it, it's labeled that way. Um, that's a busy video and uh, leads you to a shotgun page in koi vet. Um, so shotguns in quarantine, 78 degrees in quarantine, adequate room in quarantine, high levels of aeration in quarantine. Let me get to that. In quarantine, the fish may have parasites, may be breaking with diseases that affect the gills, may have been through transport and in the bag suffered gill burns. Ammonia burns the gills in transport, and they may need a little more oxygen when they get to your place. 
and as such, uh, in quarantine, if you have slightly higher than average oxygenation or aeration levels, that's a benefit. So nice and warm, established with good water quality, high aeration, shotgun treatments that are benign and safe like clout, uh, Pratsy Pro, we'll talk about all those medications. Um, and you're probably going to have a pretty good quarantine experience. Now, the, I think the last thing I want to care, cover is uh, the feeding in quarantine. The feeding in quarantine, it's very important that the fish eat, but they don't have to eat a lot. They have to keep their energy up, and they have to restart their GI tract, especially after handling, which, if you think about it, everything in quarantine has just been handled. That's the reason it's there. I really like krill, freeze-dried krill in quarantine. It's uh, eagerly accepted, it's healthful, um, it's a low residue food. You can crush the freeze-dried krill down to a size that little fish that you might bring in can eat that. And you can feed the krill whole to larger fish. Um, it has a immune supportive function. I, I really would recommend in quarantine that you would feed some freeze-dried krill in the majority. Also for sick fish, they have a tendency to hit krill a little harder than regular food, so I'm kind of thinking when you have sick fish, consider krill or if you're not already using a medicated food, if we figure out how to get medicated food for you guys. Um, you can also feed for the very small fish. You can feed uh, tetra flake food, tropical fish flake food. Um, happens to be a very uh, nutritious, again, low residue for small koi and goldfish um, in a tropical quarantine uh, where you have your angelfish and your platies and all that stuff waiting to go into the main system. You can also feed uh, tetra, tropical fish, flake food. Color enhancing is good, um, mainly because it has higher levels of protein and contains some carotenoid pigments. But um, also freeze-dried krill in the tropical fish quarantine facility because, again, you can kind of powder that with your fingers and uh, it is very helpful for the fish. So uh, I guess what I'm saying about feeding in quarantine, if you're not using an antibiotic food, um, please feed something that is eagerly accepted that even fish under stress will take. And that is usually not goldfish pellets. So we've covered temperature, feeding, flows, uh, water quality, establishment, beneficial bacteria, um, stocking density, duration to a certain extent um, in quarantine. I think that might just cover it. You should be aware too if you go over to koivet.com that's K-O-I-B-E-T dot com. There's an excellent, excellent article written on quarantine. There may actually be three. Use the search engine in there to find that article and uh, have a look at that. If you are retail Quarantine can be very, very important. However, I think for a lot of retailers, they got to get those fish sold. So they're going to benefit more from the shotgun remedies. Um, when the fish either come out of quarantine or go straight into the sales tanks, you're definitely going to want to cover yourself with um, um, the shotgun remedies. And I'm a big fan of clout or formalin for that in retail facilities. I think that's all for quarantine. I'm sure I haven't covered something. Please go to koivet.com and keyword search quarantine. It will come up a lot of times because it's very, very important. I hope you have a good day. Let's be good to each other. Uh, this is a supplement to quarantine. I'm just going to splice it into the same video uh, on the editing process, and that is the duration of quarantine. I made the facetious comment that unless you warm the fish up, you're going to need to quarantine forever for koi herpes virus. But if you do warm the fish up, then quarantine is at a minimum a week. And that would be if you are applying one of the more aggressive shotgun treatments. If you don't uh, subscribe to the idea of shotgun treatments, then you're going to need to quarantine for three weeks because the life cycle of parasites usually tapers out at 76 to 78 degrees. The life cycle of most parasites manifest in that three weeks. Um, my ideal is to quarantine for two weeks with shotguns on board. I think that covers uh, pretty well, and it makes sure that if white spot's going to show up, it's going to show up um, before you um, put the fish in the, in the tank. Sorry about the lighting in this. It's auto-correcting for exposure and white balance. I'm going to figure out a way to get that to stop. Um, 
but I think the points come across. So this is a supplement to that video that tells you one week, two week, uh, three weeks, or in a very, very long time. If you've used a uh, pre-existing facility like your old pond or old fish tank, you could quarantine them until you get around to moving them out. 